It's the Sean Widmer Podcast. It's a journal by someone that just really doesn't like to write. I legitimately have my popcorn, thanks to Roberta, my popcorn ready for tonight's episode. Thank you to the Patreons of the Sean Widmer Podcast for making this possible. Patreon.com slash Sean Widmer Podcast. We always kick the show off with five-star reviews off iTunes. We have none. I don't think we have any new ones. Let me check real quick. We're going to start it with something else today. We're going to get right into Brandon. We're just going to call Brandon here in a second. No five-star reviews. The only review I got from last episode was a call from my very best bud, Andy. And he said, were you drunk last episode? That's a real question. Were you drunk last episode? You were talking really slowly. I wasn't. I, I wasn't. But... But that that shows where we were at last episode, that Andy actually had to ask, was I drunk last episode of the Sean Wimmer podcast? I was not. There you go, Andy. There you go. It was late, just like tonight. It's 1120. Let's call Brandon, because I think we have major beef. He might not answer. Like, he's that mad. Let's see. Popcorn. What's that? You're on the podcast. What? You're on the podcast. Okay. How are we doing? I'm doing great. I'm playing uh, like a week 12 matchup against Syracuse right now. That's not what Charlotte I meant. Not what, I didn't say it in like the cool way. I didn't mean it like, hey, how are we doing and we means you. How are we doing? What is, I don't understand. What, how are you and I doing? Yep. Well, I mean, you're you're kind of upsetting me lately, but... We're fine. So you, we're in a college football dynasty. It's great to have it back. Tyler, you, me. Tyler's Ohio. You're University of Texas, San Antonio. I'm Buffalo, the mighty Buffalo Bulls. Heisman Trophy winner on the Buffalo Bulls team. And you're all mad, even though your team is in the college football playoff, and mine and Tyler's, we are not. I wouldn't say I'm mad. I'd say I'm disappointed in you. Disappointed in me? How? Yeah, because you're you're Mister. I hate cheaters. I don't like when people cheat at games. And I know you're not cheating, but you're not mm. playing in the spirit of the game. <laughs> and you hate people that do that in games. All right, so let's talk about what happened because college football has reared its head and it is causing uh, rifts and divisions in friendships, valuable friendships. So we're in this college football dynasty. First season, we're all figuring out the game. I threw one million interceptions. Tyler joined me. And Brandon started to figure the game out. Brandon Brandon unlocked something in our first season where he could work the offense. And the second season, I mean, Brandon, the second season, Kavarius, what's his name? What was the what's the running back's name that was second in the Heisman? Barnes, yep. Kavarius Barnes, is that right? Yep, Which, that's correct. Is that a real player who will be playing for University of Texas San Antonio this year? I believe, I believe so. I believe he might have butchered the first name, so nobody looked that up. It's just Barnes. Okay. And and Chance Mora will be playing for the Buffalo Bulls this year. You can look him up just for exactly how I said it. And so you started off the season really well this second season. And, and the first half of the season, I noticed you you had a little bit, some inflated numbers with Mr. They're Barnes. They're not inflated. Infla- look, I'm willing to admit my fault, but I'm going to need just a little bit from your side. I had a very powerful offense. <laughs> so this guy's averaging ten yards a carry, and I notice it, and I'm like, "Wait a second!" There's such a big, there's such a big difference between eight and ten. So, it, but at the time, I'm saying when I when I noticed it, it was like week six. This guy was ten point six or something like that. A carry, he was killing it, winning player of the week every week, and that was the moment I said, "Hang on." Brandon has found some running plays that are manipulating the computer AI on defense. And the second I, I really s- don't think I am. Okay. Well, the second I saw it, I, and this is exactly how it went down. I talked to Mike about it tonight. Who was at my house? Cause he saw, he was watching. I ran a play in a game and it was wide open for one of my guys. And I was like, Holy cow. He was wide open. So I ran that play again the very next play. He was wide open again. So I looked at that, and I go, what route is that? And I ran that route on a different play, and it didn't work. And I was like, what in the world? 
And then I noticed it was paired with another route by a different receiver. And that route is riddled throughout the playbook where one, this one receiver runs a specific route and another one runs a different route next to each other. And one of those two guys is open every time. And so what did I do? Does, it work? Does anything stop it? Does man stop it or anything? Yeah, one thing stops it. One thing stops it, but as soon as it stops it, I've got two other routes on the other side that open up. And so you you count, like it gets stopped like twice or three times in a row, and I have to punt it. And then I get the ball back, and I run that other you play. Are, oh, so I run let's it. Pa- let's pause for a second. Yeah. Let's pause for a second, because you're, you're not punting the ball. I'm punting the ball. Let's talk about your quarterback that, yeah, he threw 55 touchdowns or something like that this year. Yeah. He also threw 40 interceptions. And those are all first half. So that was first half of the season before I found the plays. Okay. Before I went deep dive, I was really struggling. I think I had like six or seven interceptions one game. I told you guys I was frustrated. And then I found the plays. And I run them a lot. So I will say that. Your but, quarterback had 2,000 more yards than anybody. But I also am curious as to how often you run your specific run play that works. Um, I mean, it's a go-to on first, second down, probably. Okay, so that's exactly what mine is. Mine's a go-to on first and second down. I don't get to down three. Yeah, there's a difference between those. You two aren't getting to down three either. You're running first there's and second a, there's down. There's a difference between putting the ball between the tackles and throwing four verts or whatever you're doing. It's not four verts. Four verts doesn't work. The safeties go back. They just drop the corners back. If it, if I'm four, running between the tackles. Four verts. So four verts is what I tried for a while. I will tell you this game, the college football 25, which I really enjoy, especially now. But it it four verts is where I was getting six interceptions a game out of frustration. It, yeah, because you start getting behind and you start just throwing the ball up, and then it yeah. ends poorly. Every I've been there many times too. You, you have to go if I can get the guy. Got to be that route combo. So got to be the guy running the post with the wheel falling behind it. It's not the wheel. I I don't have enough time. For, and I will tell you this: I do not have enough time for a wheel. I, I watched a big cat was playing, and he ran this wheel play. They love this wheel play. I don't know what they're shark wheel shark wheel. So I found a wheel play and every time I ran it, I got sacked every single time I do. I don't have enough time for my guy to run a looping route. I, I have, I counted, I've got like two and a half seconds. I have to throw it. So every time I snap it, I count in my head and I throw it, which leads to a lot of interceptions, but otherwise it's a sack. A very interesting because we're switching to Heisman in our dynasty. next season. It's not going to work for me. I also have a guy who's six, six with 96 speed. That guy is, I mean, he's built different for sure. He's 6'6", 220. He's massive. Do you see how many? Do you think break, he's going to leave you? Probably. Do you see how many break tackles he has? See, this is the thing I don't feel like you and Tyler no, are looking I, I at. I stopped looking. I, I get mad when I look at his stats because it's just so few receptions for so many yards and so many touchdowns. It makes me mad. So here is what's really causing it, B-Rose. He breaks the first tackle every time. So what I have to do is oh. run him a route that gets him into single coverage. And he will always win a jump ball, and he will always break that tackle every time. So he oh, if he gets caught, you aren't, you're not getting that many yards after catch, though. No, I'm I, no, absolutely not. I mean, I'm getting, I'm probably getting 17 yards after the catch, 17 to 20 yards after the catch. Would that be about right? Maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 12. I think was your average, but that was including the first half of the season. It's that break tackle, man. It's that. Well, I was using my that. So this guy was my second receiver. So that that's why first half of the season it was going to my other my other wide receiver who was my number one. This was my number two. So that's why his numbers were down. Also, sorry, first half. I to, sorry, I had to cough right there. Uh huh. Okay. Um. Well, I've enjoyed. Look, this this podcast is deep into the into the the college football world. But this is the kind of stuff this game brings out, and I'm I love it, but also I am trepidatious about it. I think is the word because I I don't. Well, the problem, the big thing is, is that you lost a three person dynasty. You lost to Tyler, yeah. by forty five points yeah. or something crazy. I didn't know how and the offense all of a sudden, worked you're at all. Up better numbers. What? Because I didn't know how the offense worked at all. That was my sixth game of the season that I ever played. So when I so when I go and do custom schedules next season, I put you and Tyler together right away. 
because he said some mean things to you tonight. Are you going to lose by 40 or are you going to win? Oh, I might win. I know my offense is good. My defense is horrendous. So, Brandon, I have I have not played any defense in the game outside of that one game with Tyler. I've not played one. Even in my off. Even in my offline dynasty, I don't touch defense. Yeah, I think Tyler does because his defense was was he he knew some defensive tricks. So he had guys blitzing out of weird spots that looked very YouTube tutorial esque. Was it frustrating for you that because Tyler is a couple years younger than than us, mm-hmm. and he he thought he knew the game so well, but then he kept bringing up dumb things that were like so old. Yeah, it was bothering me. Like it was brand new. Yeah, yeah. He was the. He hey, was, how do you how do you pump up the crowd? Hey, did you guys know that the game shakes when it's loud out? Yeah, dude. Yeah, he he was he was who EA is marketing this game to with all these quote Correct. new features. Well, I'm loving our dynasty, right. and I'm hoping that you win your first playoff game. I don't want you to win it all, but I would love you to win one playoff game. Do you think you've got it in you with your cheat plays? I mean, well, it's not a cheap play. We'll see who I'm playing. If it's Texas, that's going to be interesting because that's a state of Texas rivalry. Okay. That's a UT, yeah. that's a UT versus UT thing, you know? Yeah. I lo- oh, okay. So we'll I see. love this. I mean, the, yeah, that would be like if Eastern played against the Riverside campus. Exactly. Okay, we need to bring this up. We need to bring this up. Ooh, I don't, know that, I want, I don't know that I want to bring it up, but we have to bring it up. What's what? Are, what's going on with Cooper? Uh, what's going on with Cooper Cup? Can we, do we even want to bring it up, or do we just want to let it go? Do we just want to let it go? He hard, ripped. The, he ripped the turf. Like, you want to let it go because it's Coop, but he's really he ripped the turf. He uh, ripped yeah, the turf. Know. I mean, Cooper Cup. Why? Gr- gr- I don't know. Oh. Greatest Eastern Eagle of all time. Greatest Eastern Eagle of all time. Period. No one else is in the same category as him. He is the greatest eagle, and he's ripping the red turf. And that when he did that, that hit me really hard in all the wrong spots. Me too, and it just—I don't—I don't, I don't know. I'm not drinking his coffee. I can tell you that. Yeah, I—I—I I, I feel like he's pulling away from Eastern a little bit. Uh oh, the wife is in the background taking shots at you. Yeah, there's a. It hurt too though. much NCAA going on. It hurt though. It hurt. The Cooper Cup stuff is hurting me right now. I mean, he—he's just always been so quiet. Why did he decide to pipe up now? I don't know. It's killing me. It's killing me. Okay, and then finally, are you ever going to do podcasts about the vacation you took with your wife? Because you we recorded, not vacation, we recorded, sorry. Okay, so yes. Yes, I have one recorded. Okay. I want there to be a couple more, but yes. Okay, because you know I've been dying to talk to you about it on this one, but I would much rather hear about it from Jamie and you on Bro's Nose podcast. You guys had it's your coming. honey. Yeah, you had your honeymoon, and and the pictures and videos were spectacular because you went to Europe. So I'm very, very excited to hear the breakdown of the honeymoon because it looked amazing. We're trying to, we're trying to break it up into a couple episodes to make it good, but yes, it's going to be there. Okay. All right. All right. So you're cheating at college football, Cooper cup. We need him to make a donation to Eastern or something like show wear an Eastern shirt in one of his podcasts, that coffee, that coffee company better do an NIL deal for someone big dude. Why are they in Arkansas? What happened there? I don't know. Do we know why? Yeah. The Walmart guy, same guy that got Cal. So yep, hang on. Exactly. I moved to Lexington and Cal goes to Arkansas and Cooper cup goes to Arkansas. Correct. So Arkansas is the problem. Arkansas is the state, the whole United States problem right now. It seems. Oh my goodness! All right, cool. All right, we. Uh, I Tyler just sent the RTA message. He sent. I don't understand the picture he sent. He sent him middle fingering the Heisman Trophy winner, Chance Morrow. That's disrespectful. Disrespect. And I hope Chance puts up some serious points on him next year to start the season. <laughs> well, we. I think you won't even have to schedule it. I think we will be our max schedule realigns so we play each other again next year okay well maybe we'll have to decide if you and i want to play too um, yeah i mean i'm fine with that i'm not worried about either of you guys i'm worried about you hi tyler uh hey okay uh brandon goodbye can i talk to tyler real quick on the podcast yes there you go all right hello tyler you're on the podcast hi hi uh, hey, did you want to? Uh, I've got him right here listening. Did you want to say anything to the Heisman Trophy winner on our dynasty? Uh, yeah, I just wanted him to know that I know what play you run now, and it's over for you. What play do you think it is? 
Don't worry about it. Just know that I know it. I mean, you guys are real worried. This is really wor- worrisome. I will say this. It, I don't think it, it'll work against. I don't think it'll after work. You, no, after hearing what play it is, it makes sense why you only have one receiver with a bunch of receptions. What are you talking about? Okay, yeah, you don't know what it is. You have no idea what it is. Have, I know what it is. You have no idea what I'm doing out here in Buffalo. Man, everyone's – we got Buffalo. Buffalo is in the heads – of the boys in the Spokane Valley. I do know Valley. that you lost to me by 40, and that'll be 50 next uh, time. Hey, you're working for the Spokane Indians right now. It's just kind of like why, for no reason, just for fun. Uh, uh, are they good? Yeah, they're the best team in the league by far. Dude, Tyler, we don't have a minor league baseball team here in Lexington. I didn't realize how much I was going to miss that. The Spokane Indians yeah. back home, I, I, I still think it's the best game in town. I, you know, I know you love the Chiefs. I love the Chiefs. I was a season ticket holder to the, to the Chiefs for a couple seasons. I love the Chiefs. You but, were? Yeah. I mean, this would have been two thousand. This wow. would have been mid two thousands. But I. Uh, That's but, awesome. But dude, there's something about summers in Spokane. And the Indians. No, the, the vibes at the vibes at the ballpark are way better. I, right, both great. So that's why I wanted to bring that up. I just didn't want anyone to get like, well, the Indians and the Chiefs. Chiefs are Chiefs are great, but I the the Indians games yeah. are spectacular, and they're the best team in baseball. Yeah, way better. They're better than the Mariners, yes, right? They are. Better than the Mariners. Yeah, they're way better than the Mariners. <laughs> all right, dude. Um, I will see you <laughs> next season in our head to head. All right. All right. All right, Tyler. Take it easy, brother. Uh, love you, bye. Love you. All right, there they are. The the boys, the roommates. I got I mean, I'm I am I live inside of their house. I haunt their house. Uh, this has been a college football. This has been a very just for me podcast and the and the fellas and those of you who love college football. Those of you who don't, I apologize. We'll get back to the real stuff on Monday. But it, uh the game is great. The game is bringing back all the feels. We're playing on. There's different modes you can play in the game, and there's uh, freshman is the easiest mode. Varsity is the next one. All American, which is what we're playing, and then Heisman's the hardest difficulty. And apparently, we're going to move to Heisman next year in the, the dynasty with Brandon and Tyler. And I'm going to stink at that because I'm not. I, that's going to be a little too tricky for me. But the other one I'm in, the big league with Walter. They're they were playing on varsity, and I'm putting up. 90 points a game on all American. I might score 200 a game on varsity. So we'll see how that goes. But I found the place. I found the place. I'm an, I'm an, I am a seasoned veteran in the football video game world. And when you're playing against the computer, for those of you who are, are gamers, you can manipulate the defense. And I'm an, I am manipulating, manipulating with the best of them. Kelly's, what are you into? I want to give a shout out to something that I, tonight uh, Mike came over. Mike and his girlfriend Robin came over. We played some Jackbox games. I'm up way too late tonight. I've got an early meeting at work tomorrow. But we played some Jackbox games. It had been a minute. I needed. To, I wanted to catch up with Mike. Hadn't seen him. He just moved here. And of course, right when he moves here, I start a job. And so we hadn't really. We haven't really hung out a ton. And so my house is an open invite for game nights for anyone. And so Mike came over tonight. We played some Jackbox games. Still an awesome thing, right? The Jackbox party packs are great. If you don't know what the Jackbox games are, check them out. They're, we, I've talked about them before on the podcast. The history of that is very fun because the Jackbox or the Jack, you don't know Jack, there it is, was the original for this whole thing. You don't know Jack, Cookie Masterson, I think it was his name the whole way through. You've got these trivia games, from the I think the late '90s until the first Jackbox Party Pack came out, I'm not going to look Google it right now. I should have. I should have done some. Re- you know what? I said I wasn't going to. I'm going to. You. I want to know when the first one came out. You don't know Jack because we had this one. Uh, let's see here. You don't know Jack franchise. Excuse me. I just spit. 1995. So we did not have the first one. 1995. The game you don't know Jack comes out, and there are CD-ROM game for the PC. And great trivia game, right? And so this comes out, and after that, You Don't Know Jack franchise continues to make games. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000. In 2000, they made two. In 2003, they make You Don't Know Jack Volume 6. And 
Then in 2011, let's see here. In 2011, so You Don't Know Jack 6 comes out in 2003, and then it takes a break. And this is an amazing trivia series for the PC. Fantastic. I, I loved it. It was one of my favorite PC games growing up, You Don't Know Jack. It was edgy, but it was also trivia, super fun. So in 2011, You Don't Know Jack comes back out, makes a return. And it was, I remember this game being decently received as a comeback now for a, another generation. And it was all right. And then it kind of went away. That is when in 2015, I think is when it is. Let me make sure that's right. 2015... Let's see, 2000, yeah, 2014, You Don't Know Jack 2015 ends up being the Jackbox Party Pack. All right, you don't know, the, the You Don't Know Jack trivia game gets released in the Jackbox Party Pack, a game that includes You Don't Know Jack, the trivia game, and a handful of other games. It blows up. It's enormous, massive release. And because of that, the Jackbox Party Packs kick off, and now you have the uh, you know you have Jackbox Party Pack up to number ten right now, where the trivia part of it is still exists in there a little bit with some of the games, but the the core of it you don't know Jack from the '90s is gone for the most part, and now it's all these fun fun mini games that we love. They're great, but tonight I wanted to kick it old school, so we went back and we played the original from the Jackbox Party Pack one. We played you don't know Jack. And it's still so good. Fun, witty, creative trivia questions. Uh, great what, like great game against your friends. The rules are very fun. The hidden rules are fun. It's, just, it's a very fun game. So we played that for a little bit. Then from Jackbox Party Pack 2, we played Bomb Core, which is a, a co-op game where you're trying to... The, the, a bomb, like a little 8-bit bomb will show up on the screen with wires on it, different colored wires, numbers, all those things on it. And on everyone's cell phone, on their, in your device, you get rules on your device. So maybe I have rule one and three. Mike had rule two. Robin had rule four. You read through the rules, and then after hearing all the rules, you figure out what wires to cut, and someone can cut the wires. And this game goes on and on and on, and it gets more and more difficult as it goes on. And we made it, I think, eight days, seven days into it, and it's so hard. It's very fun. I'd highly recommend it. The Jackbox Party Pack games are great. I'm still a huge sucker for just, you don't know Jack, the actual trivia game. Definitely try it out if you haven't. There's my Kelly's What Are You Into? Go try Jackbox. There's no way anyone made it this far because the first half of the podcast was just personal NCAA Dynasty talk with Tyler and, and Brandon. My apologies. Garrett said this, Sean'sLife.com is where you can leave your comments. You killed the Blackstone recommendations. I would have never thought of the pizza rolls or fried rice. Not sure when I'll get to it with Harvest starting Monday, but I'll for sure let you know when I do. Keep up the great work on the pod. P.S. Put a crescent wrench, duct tape, and zip ties in the new bag. That'll help fill some po some of the pockets. That's from G. All right, Garrett, thank you. And yeah, you need to try the fried rice. You need to try the pizza rolls. Good luck on Harvest, brother. I hope it's a good year. I haven't been keeping up on it, but I hope it was a good year. I hope that Harvest goes well. And don't, you know, don't kill yourself by not sleeping. I feel like you never sleep during harvest. So at least get a little bit of sleep. You got, you got the, you got the family, you get the family to also see. So hopefully it goes well with that. As for the backpack, I've been watching the people at work. I, I just, you know, I, I'm in an industry now where a lot of people have camera equipment and stuff like that. So I did notice one guy had a lot of batteries. There was a lot of batteries for cameras. So he's actually using it for work. We, you know, I have a, a bag filled with, with, uh, Peppermints, he had a bag filled with, with batteries for a camera. So there is that one. All right, let's see what we had here. Anything on Spotify? Yes, Yvonne said this. Glad you get to be a little casual at your job. Uh, didn't You didn't sound like a pile. It was just truthful. Enjoy the rest of the week at the job. Thank you, Yvonne. It means a lot. There's no way you made it this far. Brandon says this on YouTube. Your backpack is a true offense wait hang on <laughs> okay brandon says this your backpack is a true offense your jan sport is you running the same two glitch plays over 
and over. I responded, I would never. I would never. It's like four plays. Man, I'm telling you, it's just in all these football games, when you find a play that works, you can figure out why it works. Once you figure out why a specific play works, you can lock it in. Look, there's a reason why I, and it's been a long time, 2008, I think it was the last time that I, I did it. There's a, a span of a, of a young Sean Widmer's life where I thought I could make it on the Madden bus. I'm nowhere near it anymore. He, Tyler spanked me beat, me, beat me by 40. Uh, user versus user is not my thing anymore. I'm not quick enough. I lost the reflexes on it. I haven't played enough. But there's a there's a chunk of my life where I was going to Seattle for tournaments. I won a tournament in Spokane, a big tournament in Spokane. Almost won a huge tournament in Seattle that was going to be a lot of money. Remember, it was at the Seahawks facilities. It was super cool. But I did win one. I think I won, uh, won one tournament that was a $2,000, the most I won, $2,000 tournament with Madden and won 2000 bucks. And I remember thinking that I won a billion dollars, the greatest time of my life. But I was really good at competitive Madden at one point. So there's still parts of that in me. I just can't do it against the user. Now I have to do it against the computer. This has been a ton of college football talk, nerds. Thanks for listening. <laughs>